Well, if it's true that we don't want our situations out there in the light, what's going on with social media? So, uh, so if social media is the highlights, then what's wrong with showing the highlights? Isn't that what literature does? Like we write poems, we write poems about about exciting things. We write poems about being in love. We write so poems about about adventure. When we write songs, don't we write the same way? <clears throat> so then, I mean, who wants to read a poem about being bored? Or who wants to hear a boring song about being bored? <laughs> you know, we write, we, we do art about ideals. So why wouldn't so so what's the what's what's wrong with showing that uh, those ideals on social media, showing you know, the the perfect body or the, the perfect day or the perfect experience? Yeah. Because no one wants to truly show the body, like what they're actually wanting. What they're actually what? Like, say for example, someone looking at social media and they post that they're so happy and they're so content, but actually they're not. Like they're not gonna post that they're not going through. So they're normal. They're, they're trying, they're they're trying to see. They're, yeah, they're, they're happy, calm. Yeah. So they're normal. They're trying to like, make a person that like they're normal, they're happy, they're true, they're true. Yeah, yeah. they live in a duality. Duality. Oh, here we go. You know, bring it. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you think? Like, what do you think? Have you ever seen like the, those drama faces with um, one's happy and one's sad? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got one right there on the wall. Yeah, it's just like that. They're... No, I don't. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, <I'm not> really. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like that. You know, like what you, what you mentioned. You know, when that person is trying to be that normal person, but when they are off of social media or they're by themselves, they're a whole, totally different person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I guess the question again is what's wrong with that, though? Like, what's wrong with, with putting forth that, that, that false front? Because we do it in most other areas of life. And what is it about social media that's, that, that, that has us so messed up? Like, for example, why can we look at thousands of years of literature that are written about the highlights of, of life, and even entirely fictitious highlights of life? And yet, today, all of a sudden, we, we see social media, we're like, oh my god, that's messing us up. So it creates kind of like this competition among among common people. Also, when do you? Uh, I'll ask you. Anyway, when do you sit down to read a poem, or when do you sit down to read a book? Like, what's your mindset when you do something like that? When you got nothing to do. Do you do it when you're bored, or do you do it when you want to be excited? Like, when you go watch a movie, do you go watch a movie when you're just bored? Like, I mean, actually, go watch one. Um, or do you go watch one because you're looking forward to, to watching something? Both? Could be both. Both could be both. Yeah. Yeah. No sports. Um, anybody in here pick up a poem and read a poem when you're just bored and go, let me read some poetry because I'm bored? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Yeah. I don't find poetry in Oh. We're going to fix that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Come on, you got to wonder why I'm talking so much about poems today. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be so exciting. You're gonna love it. Oh no. Um, and yeah, perhaps. But I mean, for the for most of us, going and reading a poem when we're bored is just gonna make the problem worse, right? I imagine. Yes. Maybe. Okay. Oh, yeah, when, what's that? It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> good man. It's it's okay. I'm willing to give it a try. How about uh? When you, when you look at social media, do you sit, do you look at social media when you're excited and you got a lot to do? No. 
<laughs> so that's almost exclusively something that we do when we're bored, is kind of fill in that gap, fill in that time. And so it, it, when we see things that are like perfect and ideal, they kind of hit us over the head at a time when we're most vulnerable. Because you're looking at these images and things about how exciting other people's lives are when you're at, at, the, at the moment that your life is the most boring. You know? You're, you're sitting in your, your math class, not, not your English class, of course, but you're sitting in your math class and you're very bored. Or you're sitting on the toilet. Or any of these kinds of things. It's, it's, it's essentially designed and built as a distraction. Or at least it's manifested to the point that it's now a distraction. And so at the point that we're most vulnerable, that we're least satisfied with our lives, that we're most bored, we pick up this thing and go, let me see what's going on in the world. And, you, and, you, and you've seen that everybody is doing such exciting stuff because we see those highlights. And so that can cause us perhaps to, to compare our lives to, to, to those other things. You know, it's even like, <clears throat> even like with drama, it's like, my goodness, how, how do we get so wrapped up in drama online? You know, like, I mean, I have a, um, like I, I post very rarely, and I have a standing rule that I don't engage people in conversations online. Because how much can you solve in the comments section? <laughs> you know, are you going to win that argument? Are you going to win that fight? Um, you might win, but you're not going to win. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yesterday? Yeah. I did not see the fight. <laughs> I, I got you. That had nothing to do with me. I just put my head down and, and just kick. <laughs> ate my lunch, man. I know right now. I um yeah, it was, it was during during lunch. I think it was during lunch. Yeah, yeah. I heard it was a girl against a dude. No, it was, it was two girls. There's two girls? See, this is why I never believe anything I hear. You know, I have a, a, a list of suggestions for a sensible life. And one of, my, one of my suggestions for a sensible life is to be skeptical of every first story that you hear. So whenever someone says, like, this happened, be skeptical of it. Don't be like, oh, wow, let me tell everybody about that. Because yesterday someone was telling me it was a girl against a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> And so whenever I hear stuff like that, I'm always like, that's fascinating. And I go, you know, do you have a, you have a video? Do you have a, oh, no, my friend's got a video. Oh, can, can, can I see it? Yeah, 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 I'll get it from him. How often do I get it? Never. Almost <laughs> never. It turns out the video doesn't really exist. Or the video is just like, oh, no. <laughs> I don't understand, man. Like, we're born with cameras in our hands now. How can we be such crappy, you know, documentarians? You know, how hard is it to, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Later, you don't have to add all the. You can, even add, you can even add camera shaking now. But anyway, no, I did not see this. Um, I know of it because I, I. You know how you can get that feeling? It's like a, like a, a sense that something's about to go down. I, yeah, it's like that sixth sense. And so, um, <laughs> growing up where I grew up, I was the only white guy, so you get really attuned to that to that feeling. <laughs> so my, all of spidey sense goes off, and uh, it's also how you learn Spanish. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's also another true story. And so, yeah, was, yesterday I just got this feeling, I'm like, huh, something's about to go down. And then, like, you know, about 30 seconds later or so, I saw people running over and, and all that. And so. Oh, people reminded me over. Yeah. Did you see a whole crowd of people running over? They yeah, weren't even, like, bunched up. They were all, like, just, like, a big circle, and they were right there in the middle. Oh. Oh, good. They gave a room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 anyway, um... Yeah, it's a funny thing, isn't it? Oh, I hate drama. I hate Fight! And we go running over there. We go migrating over there. So whenever there is drama, we do, come on, we love drama. You know, we also love to say how, how little we like it. And so it's, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's worth asking ourselves, like, why is it that we have to be so convinced about saying that we don't like the things that we do like? You know? I guess it's because normal people don't like those things, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's the facade that we put forth because if we all suddenly go, dude, I love drama. Dude, I love drama. Hey, let's go start some drama. <laughs> but who? Dude, everyone loves drama. So then you go out and it would make society chaos. It would make it chaotic. So you guys are on the track, of course, with us. Yeah. Sharma was saying we can forgive a child who's afraid of, uh, of the dark. And we've beaten that one to death. You know, it's not, still, it's worth saying again and again and again, but 
we populate the unknown with our imaginations. The things that we, that we see in the closet are the things that are inside of ourselves. The monsters that we see are just projections of these things that are inside of ourselves. And we're just as terrified of them being outside as we are of them being inside of us. And so that's a battle we have to fight. It's the same reason that we have to fight the monster in the closet. The difference, by the way, is that the monster in the closet isn't actually inside the closet. It is really actually inside of us. It's a projection. But again, that's not a bad thing. Because sometimes you do have to become the monster. Sometimes you do have to become the monster. Um, there are a lot of situations in life, I'm sure you can all imagine some, that you'd much rather have a monster with you than have that, you know, the 85-pound beta cut who believes that violence is never the answer. <laughs> of course, by the way, someone like that believes that violence is never the answer. If you're, you know, I never, I'm a pacifist. Well, of course you're a pacifist. <laughs> if you weren't, you would die. You know, you know, sit there, look at a rabbit and go, that, my, I have a little rabbit, and that rabbit is so virtuous. It never, ever attacks my pit bull. <laughs> That's a good rabbit, huh? <laughs> no, instead we look at it the other way. We look at the pit bull who doesn't eat the rabbit, and we're like, "That's a good dog." <laughs> you know, the pit bull is capable of destroying the rabbit, but it just chooses not to. And so it's a good thing for us to to be able to be capable of, of extreme violence if necessary, but also to to routinely choose not to, so that if that ever has to happen, and I don't say that we have to go through life ready to to kill everybody. Um, certainly not, of course. But it was it, uh, oh, what was his name? Oh, I'm trying to remember the general's name. It's on the tip of my tongue. I only know his nickname, Mad Dog. <laughs> if any of you, are, you know who I'm talking about, he has a great comment, a, uh, great comment something to the effect of be kind, be courteous, and have a plan to kill everybody you meet. <laughs> that's the general. Now, that's a little bit extreme. <clears throat> Don't have a plan to kill everybody you meet, but certainly always have a plan for action if you need to. You know, um, one of the things that we do in language is we develop the ability to, to negotiate, communicate, and to understand. And if you're, if you're able to develop that skill set, that will deal with 99.9% .9 of your problems in, in life. And I don't just mean like conflicts in the street. I'm talking about conflicts or, or just kind of just understanding with significant others. I'm talking about friend, you know, just understanding and communicating with your friends, your family, people at work. That will solve a lot of your problems, being able to communicate effectively. Once in a while, you know, 0.01 or so, you do have those kinds of situations. And so, and it doesn't have to just be like physical violence. It can also just be like, you know, willingness to stand up for yourself. Uh, willingness to stand up for others. And these things only come from having a certain level of confidence, which is derived from having had successful actions in the past. In other words, you have to have a reason to be confident. You can't just will yourself to be confident, just like you can't will yourself to be happy. You have to have a reason to be happy. It has to be something that precipitates that. You can't just will yourself even to laugh. You know, like you can you can mechanically and fit and and like physically laugh, but you know we know the difference. You know, you can't will yourself to be any of these things. You have to have a good reason for it. So he says that the real tragedy is, as you guys said, that, the, that when people are afraid of the light, when we're afraid of enlightenment, when we're afraid of knowing the truth. You know, and it's a weird thing. It's like the, Think about this. The truth is the one thing. The truth is the one thing that sets you free in life. It's the one thing that sets you free. And yet it's the one thing that we're terrified of, knowing the truth, which means we're afraid of being set free. Because along with freedom comes that intense responsibility. You know, that now we're responsible for how things turn out. You know? So when we say, you know, when we say things like, you know, the human, uh, the human spirit yearns to be free, um, it isn't exactly clear that it is. We might be, we might yearn to be free of certain things, like, like we might be, we might yearn to be free of guilt and shame. Um, but sometimes we, we should feel guilty. Sometimes we should feel shame. If we do something terrible, we should feel those things. The point, though, is that you shouldn't, sh you shouldn't feel it to the point that it stops you from now doing the right things. It should remind us, you know? It should remind us about how we don't want to feel. If you've done something terrible, like for example, I can think back to some things I've done in my life that I just think, like, oh, I don't want to feel like that again. You know, I've treated people certain ways. I've, I've said certain things. I've behaved in ways. And I've just thought, oh, I don't want to feel that shame again. I don't want to feel that guilt again. So it stops me from doing those things. But, those, but 
guilt and shame should not stop you from doing the right thing, but it oftentimes does. It sometimes does. It causes people to, to, um, you know, feel like I'm not good enough. You know, I'm a piece of crap. I've done some terrible things in my life. I don't deserve good things. You know, everyone deserves good things. I mean, everyone deserves love, except people who think they deserve love. <laughs> you know? Love is a sacrament. It should be taken kneeling, like every other sacrament. And yet we, we, you know, you'll find that the people who think that they're most entitled to it, well, we can look at the Instagram, right? If you don't, if you can't handle me and my worst, you don't deserve me and my best. Well, okay. You ever notice that people who post that are usually at their worst? You know? You can feel the eyes burning right now. <laughs> Some of you quoted Marilyn Monroe. Keep in mind, Marilyn, I believe that came from Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. And anybody know how Marilyn Monroe died? Alone, overdosed, having placed phone calls to th- was it, three former lovers, crying out to help for them, to, you know, saying, I'm killing myself, and none of them showed up. The only one who showed up was Robert Kennedy. And he was there to scrub the scene, <laughs> to make sure that nobody knew that she called him and that there's, there's no evidence of him having been there ever. So keep that in mind that that's how that person dies. As beautiful as she was, as famous as she was, all of those things that she was, she was just always at her worst. And so, maybe we shouldn't advertise our worst. You know? I guess I would say that. Find the things in your life that, that, that you do that are least worthy to represent you and get rid of them. Find the things in your life that are least worthy to represent you and get rid of them. Anger, Resentment, the contempt, let those things burn away. Because any time that we, that we indulge those worst parts of ourselves, we give way to a worse version of ourselves. You know? How is that for some truth? Yeah? When you say people are afraid of reality? Um, when people, I think that people are afraid of, of discovering what reality is. Yeah, like people often never say, you know, you know, I live in the real world, I'm a realist, or, or better yet, here's some truth for you. Um, sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not. People will oftentimes say that other people are afraid of living in reality. Like I'll, like I'll say to you guys, hey, you guys are afraid of living in reality. What I mean by that is, you're not accepting what I'm telling you. <laughs> you know, I'm giving you, maybe I'm not giving you good reasons for it. Maybe what I'm telling you is complete garbage. Maybe it's, you know, maybe you just, you know, you experience something completely different, but people oftentimes would get angry at others for not accepting the reality that we accept. Yeah. Is there an objective reality? Yeah, of course there is, but none of us sees the world the way it really is. We see the world the way that we are. And that's what makes it so difficult for us to, to convey our, our, sense, uh, our sense of the world to others, because we have to use language to do that. And I have to, I have to therefore express something to you that you haven't experienced, and that's so hard. To, ex- to express something to someone that they haven't experienced, something to somebody that they have not yet experienced. We'll see a lot more of that in the third, uh, when we look at, um, uh, when we look at, at the allegory of the king of Plato. We'll see a lot more of what we mean by that. Mm-hmm. Questions? Comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? All right.